This is Cal Cats the Cal Catster, and this is a review of Zombie Land, Zombie Land Two. Yes, um, Double Tap. I was gonna call it uh, Adventure Land. Um, <laughs> Zombie Land Two. Uh, I've already watched the Stone Gremlins review of it, and but I, I've seen the movie now. So, um, the uh, um, yeah, uh, not sure if I reviewed it. Back in the day, ten years ago, would have been the first season of the Cal Cat Show, or whether I just mentioned it on the Clara Awards that year, just you know, funny zombie comedy of the year, um, kind of thing. But yeah, Zombie Land uh, movie has nothing to do with that. Uh, it uh, it has elements of Resident Evil, the last one where they were in the White House. It starts with them in the White House, and they're, they're making fun of that. In, in this universe, the doomsday happened ten years ago, and, and it's been heck ever since. Which begs the question, wouldn't there, wouldn't there, two things wouldn't work anymore. The zombies would all be dead, because there wouldn't be anything to feed them. And they would have no food, because no one's making any food. So they, they'd all be dead. But uh, they do, at one point in the movie, reference the Walking Dead comic books, because the show hadn't started yet. And say they're unrealistic, which was funny. Uh, they also... Do a scene where their their body doubles show up at doppelgangers show up at the uh, the at the Elvis. There's an Elvis ho uh, sort of lodge hotel thing near Graceland in the movie. Uh, they go there and uh, their the doubles show up and Stone Gremlins people were like, oh, wouldn't that be cool if that was Michael Sarah instead of that other guy from the movie? And actually, I looked it up online and apparently. The director had actually asked Michael Sarah to play the double in, in the movie because they look a lot alike and he didn't want to do it so they had to get the other guy from from Social Network to play him. Um, but really it should have been Michael Sarah because that would have been awesome. Uh, they should do a movie called Twins with them and Mr. Hater. <laughs> they did not so he's not in the movie so spoiler he's not in the movie. Uh, but it was funny who they got it just wasn't Michael Sarah, that's what who it should have been. So the Stone Glamorans guy was wondering, guys were wondering, him and Jared were wondering about that. Also, they were commenting, "Oh, is Jared the new guy or something?" And that guy was there in the beginning of that series, Stone Gremlins, way back in 2011 or something. So he, yeah, he's been around for. He was one of the first hosts of the uh, program. Zombie Land, we did not come up with. Um, there, there are some. You get lines in there. And also, um, yeah, Zombie Land 2, set 10 years later. They're like a dysfunctional family. You got Woody Harrelson's character and, and, uh, and, um, uh, uh, Emma Stone's character and Jesse Eisenberg. Not Sarah, Jesse Eisenberg. And, uh, you got, you got Abigail Breathlin in there. Um, from Little Miss Sunshine and from American Girl. Um, she was a co-star with, uh, Let's see. <laughs> so, um, anyway, it has been ten years. Uh, they go on a road trip. Well, first of all, what happens is they go to the mall. After the one lady leaves, the two guy, the two girls leave. And the two guys end up in the movie. The two guys end up on their own, so they go to the mall and they use the, one of those beat up old, burned down malls from uh, down in the um, Georgia area, and uh, <laughs> to film the movie in the movie. Uh, awesome looking set because the you know the mall's all just deteriorated. It's like that now. Um, uh, yeah, and they meet up with the plucky, airheaded blonde character who's basically pissed. Yeah, it was vegan. <laughs> so yeah, another another of that same Breslin cast actually uh, is in the movie. Um, so we have <laughs> this weird sort of like yeah, it's a reunion of American Girl basically. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> early 20s. But, uh, yeah, so she's in the movie, and she falls in love with Eisenberg's character, who is going to be engaged to the, to the character, uh, to the, to the, yeah, the other girl that left with her to find her, to be with her sister. Uh, getting all these characters kind of mixed up, I think Breslin is actually the sister in the movie, who runs off with the hippie guy, and the airhead is someone else. So I got that mixed up during the movie, and I was like, oh, that's not actually the same person. That's Breslin's the 
girl from the first one who was, yeah. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> this movie's all over the place. But yes, uh, um, so we have this weird, lots of uh, gags and things about zombies. Uh, some slow-mo stuff in the beginning, just to show slow-mo zombie kills and stuff. Although zombie movies are not necessarily my cup of tea, though. I'd rather prefer the, uh, if, if, like, I my horror movies be more uh, Haunted House or Scary Clowns or something like that. Or Scary Creatures or Little Gremlins or things like that. But, you know, zombies are okay, I guess. Like Mark's Cards is more into them than I am. Um, uh, yeah, I, I tend to, like, like spooky uh, trapdoor witch things and stuff like that for horror movies. The scary thing. Uh, scary woods and stuff. Mainly haunted houses, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so yeah, it was a kind of a fun house thing at, at times. And it, um, the, <laughs> the doppelgangers, of course, uh, dispatched, and there's a fight scene with them. Um, the uh, there's a zombie. They make fun of Terminator Two by referring to. A breed of the zombies that's faster. Romero, not not Romero type of zombies, but Raimi type of zombies, which are the fast ones. Uh, somewhere in between are the ones that eat brains. Brains, brains. There's a joke that's in the trailer where they're, they're they say to the airhead girl, which is kind of, but it's it's offensive anyway, so it's fine. Um, or they say to her, "Oh, the zombies didn't get her," and she's, well, and Woody Harrelson go, "Well, that's because she's got no brain. They don't want." To <laughs> <laughs> so she's got no brain for them to eat. It's messed up. But yeah, they go to the, the Graceland, which is destroyed, and then they find the Graceland Museum, which isn't the hotel museum, which doesn't make sense, but okay, fine. Um, maybe they moved it. Uh, there's a lot of well, potential shagging, but they don't actually really show anything. You get to see the, the uh, Eisenberg with the, the two ladies and... Uh, Harrelson with a new one that they encounter at the Elvis Museum. Harrelson's character claiming he's part Cherokee was funny. Um, that ties into this uh, zombie attack on the... on the. Uh, the there's always, in a zombie movie, you always have the beats that lead to the main characters going to a sanctuary that's being destroyed. So that happens in here, too. So it's... it's, it's uh, uh, at least it doesn't end in a carnival, but there are fireworks. Um, so this is uh, late fall. You see. Um, uh, uh, they're, 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 so there's a scene in which they're, they're running the zombies off of a big tower. In it, in it. I won't give away everything, but it's supposed to be a Cherokee thing. It's not, but <laughs> it's more like the, uh, the, lemmer, the Lemmings thing from Disney. A year, see, uh, 20 years ago or so, 25 years ago, there was a uh, a Disney Channel movie that they got in trouble for, uh, and it's become a meme since the internet started 20 years ago or so, uh, 25 years ago. Uh, it's become a, a thing, like the lemmings going off the cliff, and actually what really happened is these guys creating this, like, dis uh, it was not Disney nature, it was something before that. They pushed them off the cliff. Uh, yeah, in the, in the story, it's really messed up. Poor little lemmings. <laughs> so yeah, that doesn't stampede off the cliff. Doesn't. Really. It's funny that they reference Elvis in there. So who would be the original King of Rock, current King of Rock and Roll? It'd probably be it'd probably be Elton John, actually. If you think about it, currently the current reading pop pop rock king. So it wouldn't be Bieber. He's not. He never was big enough to be the king. No, he's like a prince or something. No, it's it's probably Elton John. Um, because, yeah, who else would it be? Pop, rock, king, guy. Um, I guess modern rock groups. And, and the surviving Beatles are still the first kings of boy bands way back. So the surviving ones are still, yeah, they're still the kings of that. All the other boy bands afterward are just copy. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, um, so who's ever, who's ever still left? Uh, it was fine. It was fun. There were some good scenes in it. I just um, went on a tangent about the Mandela effect, um, so, which is, yeah, um, ties into Sarah and the other guy being confused.
both sets of the movies are similar. The guy in Napoleon Dynamite, for instance, isn't either of them. He's uh, Jason Hedder. <clears throat> so a different guy. Yeah. <laughs> different dude. And then there's a weird Bill Murray cameo at the end. In which he looks ten years older and he's playing like alternate version of himself from ten years earlier. It doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, so covering similar territory. So they go on a road trip and uh, the the girl goes to the the younger sister of the uh, the, the girl is now dyed her black in the movie um, Emma Stone's character goes off with a hippie and she's like, you see, cut to shots of her with the hippie guy and they go to the hippie commune, and that's where they eventually the heroes meet up there. Uh, there's also the, uh, the the other one's going to Graceland, chasing after them, and go to the, the Graceland hotel. That's in the story. I don't want to give away everything. Uh, eventually, they all show up at the commune for the big finish, which is right out of Resident Evil two and uh, five and six, I think. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, and zombie and uh, uh, World War Z. A little bit of that, too. <laughs> Throwing um, And you wonder where the camera is if they're recording the action. They do break the fourth wall a few times. This is funny. It's like, yeah. 4K theater watching this movie. Although, that actually creates an error because 4K theater did not exist back then. I think you meant to say 4D theater? 90s? And they also reference Uber, but that's just a joke, so that's okay. <laughs> she's she gonna invent Uber. The yeah, the dirty one's gonna invent Uber. You know, um, with zombies, zombie Uber. It would be hilarious if they just threw in a, a gag where the zombies in the Uber. Damn. It's like ah, 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 ah. well, that'd be like a you know whatever. <laughs> yeah, two dollars to get down to, but oh, talk or just don't eat me on the way. <laughs> and he closes the door. I would do a cat. <laughs> like that. the zombie. Fuck. <laughs> His car gets crushed by the... Oh, there's the, the, uh... Yeah, the redneck car. Go for rednecks. Yahoo! Uh, the redneck truck. It's a monster truck from Radio right Grand Theft Auto. And it has the, uh, horn from the Dukes of Hazzard car, the General Lee. You know, and apparently John Schneider is making a General Lee Cars Christmas movie. Or at least it was a thing online. I think it might have just been like a special. But yeah, selling General Lee Cars. <laughs> oh, and, and people being offended about the Lee Cars. So there was rednecks in this, it's related. And I was thinking like, um, Zombie Land 2, go see it in theaters. That's fine. Um, Halloween movie, I have not seen... Abominable or Adam's Family, the the remake cartoon. I consider that more of a reboot cartoon, more than a move and more than an actual movie because it is a cartoon. I consider it like a like a version of the '70s cartoon. So it's like okay, I would put it in a different category. It's, it's animated cartoon, like in the style of Leica, but not really. I don't think it is Leica. I think it's somebody else. Um, thought about yeah. So. And that stars Chloe Moritz playing uh, another one from the, the, the man from Hit Girl. I also from uh, our American Girl. Um, oh, um, that's fine. Zombie movie. Uh, there's there's no gratuitous nudity or anything. It's just violent uh, zombie stuff. Uh, I don't think there was any in the in the first one either. Really. Uh, there's yeah. Um, it's funny that Woody Harrelson has, as of the last 20 years or so, been playing nothing but these sort of tough redneck cowboy guys. It's the guy that started on Cheers 30 years ago as the sort of mousy, like, blonde guy that's in the background doing the whole, the whole, whole shtick. Um, but yes, um, but strange things to look forward to over in the, later in the year movies, uh, Includes a really boring preview for a horror movie. What was that? What was that? There were two horror movies like boring. One was this lady in a house and 
She's like, a, like the, the house is up to get her. They've done that like five times recently. Uh, it's coming in January. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a dumb, uh, there's a, a cell phone movie where the cell phone turns evil. It's called Alexi. That's out. Oh my God, that's stupid. And then there's, um, <laughs> and then there's another one where the cell phone turns evil and it, it's called Countdown. And the cell phone tells you you're gonna, when you're gonna die. They've done that a bunch of times. Including Friendster and oh, like, <laughs> Happy Death Day kind of did that. And, um, and Part 2. And, uh, yeah, a lot of those uh, social uh, network ones. There was a, a evil Facebook one that's called Unfriended. There's a bunch of them have done that. It's like the internet's going to kill you. It's kind of the ring over again. Cause the ring did that too. Evil tape was going to kill you. Oh. Ooh, the Cal Cat version of, of our Blair Witch parodies. We uh, had done some horror parodies. Uh, we usually had we usually had to visualize and actually show, not tell, but uh, what's going on. Um, so we would go in and have Cal Cat playing a different character, go in and do a crazy uh, thing, or aliens that abduct him, or whatever. The last one was at uh, the convention. We were just running around with the Teddy Ruxpin. Rest in a costume, but yeah, the uh, the the mousetrap projects were kind of their own thing, even though they were clearly an homage to the Blair Witch Project. But in a sense, they were their own thing because they were like, well, we have an homage, but we also kind of go there and our own do our own. I mean, part two was about alien invasion and like weird aliens came down and had us, and then <laughs> the Mark's cards played one of the aliens the end. And that is where Silly Kelly had mentioned in a recent review of uh, and, uh yeah, Mousetrap Project 2 is more viral than the other ones. Well, not slur viral. People have seen it. People are putting it in movies. Uh, not knowing where they got the information from because they have Mandela Effect. See, it's all connected. Uh, they're not knowing which, which YouTuber started it. But the Merkin scene that, that Kelly mentions and Kelly and uh, Creech they were the two weirdos. They predate uh, uh, Randall and Dante from uh, Clerks by six years. Uh, they were in the original Cal Cat sketches back in the 80s in high school. Sort of a Stan and Ollie type of characters and they would be a classic sort of one's high strung and the other's not. The other's not high strung. He's just sort of scatterbrained. It's glitzy. Uh, Beavis and Butthead, uh, Mike Judge, is also very similar to that. Um, um, the Cal Cat and Jim Tacon get together where reversed beefs and butt. Jim Tacon is the hyperactive sort of <laughs> and on the other like, oh dang it Beavis so it's like it's on the other guy. I, I play the straight man when Jim, Jim Tacon, Jim Buffkin is here. I play the straight man. Uh, when Mark's Cards is here he plays the straight man. So he plays so if we were the clerks guys we would be Randall and Dante. You know, I would be, he would be the, I'm not going to be here today. And uh, I would be the ch chatty one. Of the We're not really Jay and Silent Bob. Because they, they so I'm, they're, uh, they, neither of us are silent. So, we're, does its thing. <laughs> it's fine. Um, But the, um, yeah, so, Merkin scene, Mark's cards, character talks about the Merkin. It's literally the same dialogue that Jay Mew's puts in the in Silent Bob reboot. The Merkin? I don't want to know about the Merkin. I want to know about that. <laughs> we don't use those. Uh, it's literally the same dialogue. So Kevin Smith saw Mousetrap Project 2 and said, I want to put that line in my movie. <laughs> he may have not even realized that's where he got it from. He got it from us. No. <clears throat> but we technically got it from John Waters. Classic. The uh, guy from back in the day uh, that was probably stolen from a John Waters movie so he might have seen the same John Waters movie as probably yeah he probably saw Dirty Shame and he just copied that's what we did we copied so it wasn't our idea but it, it's funny that the lines are very very close that in there <laughs> Mark's Cars was ad-libbing very close um, yeah Dirty Shame you know when I wear American talk about that <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Mink Stoll that mentioned the Merkin and the Dirty Shame. 
Uh, have you ever worn American? We don't talk about that. <laughs> It like twice, too. It's a wig for your pubes. Ah, it's like it was almost as if Cal Cat was right there. He wasn't, it was almost like he was right there on the set when they did that scene. He was like, Put this in the movie, <laughs> it'll be funny. <laughs> but he wasn't. No, I did not go down south and film the movie. Uh, but it's definitely on the same wavelength. In fact, the, the, the convention acting crazy scene is literally on the same wavelength. It's uh, just Sure, we're going to go to the convention and, and just have, like, random shots from the convention as though we were actually all there in the same spot, but it was just Calcat. Yeah, we, we've done that. We've done that a couple of movies, including the infamous um, uh, Mousetrap Projects and uh, the uh, Marshall Sportist movie where we cut uh, different scenes in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Damon and Affleck's lines were clearly recorded afterward. That's funny. Uh, Stan Lee's... Uh, uh, stay for that cameo and in, uh, reboot. They actually interviewed Stan Lee, one of his last interviews in the movie. So I'll give that away. Uh, stay for the ending of Jane Silent Bob reboot, and you get to see a cameo with Stan Lee that they interviewed him. So the uh, the Marvel guy, every yeah, everybody knows that guy. <laughs> I got to, I got to see him uh, a couple of years ago when he was at the at the, uh, the convention and uh, uh, Comic Con, San Jose Comic Con, his last performance. Yeah, they were, there was a line that was already done. And I've seen him a couple times. And then um, I didn't get his autograph, though. But I did get to, to wave hi and say hi to Stanley. You know, they're all... Well, partly the Trek experience is gone. Anyway, that's, so this is my review that rambled on.